D&D number three, Finding Home in Jesus' Name, chapter 10. Lisa opened her eyes at the soft knock on the hospital room door. Chaz's face peeked around the corner. Hi, she said softly, smiling up at him. Hey, swallowing hard, his eyes darted to the bandage on her arm. No blood. Are you feeling okay? She nodded. They gave me something for pain. 28 stitches. Have to keep my arm in a sling for a while. He nodded and shoved his hands in his pockets. <clears throat> so, Doc says you can go. I'll be happy to drive you and Miss Maddie home. Um, unless you'd rather go home with Joe. He's on his way. Her hand flew to her mouth. Oh, I forgot about my father. Did you call him? Maddie did. She shook her head. I'm not used to having people around I can depend on when something bad happens. Well, you do. You have lots of people. Maddie says your dad totally freaked out. She had to do some fast talking to calm him down. Well, if he's on his way, then I shouldn't leave without seeing him. Chaz nodded. I understand. Well, I'm afraid. Afraid? Of going home? Maddie and I had a long talk, and we're going to install new locks and alarms, and we'll make the house impenetrable. We won't let this of not having you in my life. He turned away and ran a hand through his hair. He turned back to see her gazing steadily at him. I don't know what to say, Lisa. I need to work some things out. Miserable, Lisa thought. He looked absolutely miserable, yet... Him saying he had to work some things out was a huge jump from wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. So she smiled at the progress. I won't pressure you, she said, and I will accept that ride home after I see my father. Breathing a sigh of relief, he nodded. Do the police have any idea who did this, she asked. Nothing solid yet. Tyson's working with the county police. Do you think Maddie will be in danger if I defy this jerk and stick around? Which, of course, I intend to do. I just found home. I'm not leaving anytime soon. I don't know what to think. I do know I'd worry more about Maddie with you gone than with you living in her house. The impact the inn will have on the town. Did I miss something? Whose toes will I be walking on? Is there another inn, a motel maybe, that feels I would be stealing their business? Chaz thought, well, there's a motel, though it's not in the city limits. It's out on the state highway. Magnolia Garden, just a hole in the wall, really. Most of their business comes from the bar next door and vice versa. You bringing in some tourism could only help them. She grimaced and raised a hand to her head. He came forward and took her hand. Headache? Uh-uh, I'm dizzy. I think the painkillers they gave me are getting to me. I just want to go home and sleep. Soon, baby. She smiled and contentedly closed her eyes. New scene. Lisa Lewis. Thinking of her made him want to slam his fist through a wall. To think he'd been engaged to her. To think of all the money he'd spent on her. Fancy restaurants, shopping trips, stupid romantic gestures, all for nothing. Everything in his life had gone bad, and it was all because of her. Why did she have to come home early that day? And then, did she have to go bonkers, pulling a gun on him? For that alone, he should have beat her to a pulp when he'd had the chance. Once she'd missed the dinner party, his life has been hell. Lou freaked, the board freaked. It wasn't enough that he'd flown to that godforsaken state to pick up Lou's precious car and driven all the way back to Los Angeles. And what did he get for that? He got to run out of gas. Twice. He'd known the inevitable was coming when Lou didn't recommend him for the VP. He'd known it was just a matter of time before she liked to put the entire episode behind her. And when Lou put things behind her, that was where they remained. Lisa was behind her, and now he was. Fired. Let go. Terminated. He didn't really hold it against Lou. It had just been business for her. He actually had a grudging respect for her even though he was mad at her at the moment. But Lisa, gorgeous, sweet Lisa, poor little put-upon Lisa, self-righteous witch Lisa. As he drove, he smiled at the memory of backhanding her across that smug little face. 
He put all he had into it and it had felt good. Next time, and there would be a next time. There wouldn't be any reason to hurry. Turning onto the interstate, he pointed his Jaguar east. Oh, yes. He fully intended to work her over good. Maybe even draw blood. Definitely get a final piece of what used to belong to him. New scene. Maddie pushed the front screen door open with her hip and came out onto the porch, tray in hand. Here you go now. Y'all have been working so hard. Take a break and have some iced tea. Joe, Chaz, Charles, and Tyson quickly took Maddie up on her offer. They noticed in gratitude. They nodded in gratitude. Chaz slumped onto the porch swing. His father dropped into a rocker while Tyson and Joe sat heavily on the steps. They were quiet while they quenched their thirst. It was Joe who finally spoke. I used to think murder was something beyond my reach, you know? I couldn't understand how a man could possibly be crazy enough to take another man's life. But I tell you, he stopped and shook his head. I could kill the man who hurt Lisa. I could tear him apart with my bare hands. Chaz understood Joe's need completely, but didn't let on. Instead, he looked over at his little brother. Tyson, any more leads? Well, now, if there were, after Joe's little speech, I'm not real inclined to say. Then you do have something, Charles asked. You got to let me in on it, Joe said. When I have more information, I'll fill you in. Right now, I have a few ideas running through my head. I need more than an idea to accuse someone, though. But you really need to stop with the vigilante talk. I know, I'm just venting a little. I just want her safe. This guy threatened her, told her to leave, and she says she's pretty well dug in. I want her safe. I tried to talk her and Maddie both into staying with Shirley and me, but they won't budge. It's making me crazy. Well, now that we've installed the new windows and doors and the alarm system, I'm feeling a lot better about these women living here alone, Charles said. Oh, piddle. I've been living alone in this big old house for years. Well, I'd say circumstances have changed, Miss Maddie, Charles answered. I suppose you're right, but I'm not leaving my home, and no one is going to tell me that my granddaughter can't stay here in her home where she belongs. The screen door opened and Lisa stepped out. Maddie, Chaz, and Joe all jumped to their feet. Oh, dear, Lisa, do you think you should be up? Maddie asked. I've been in bed for two days, drugged up on painkillers. All they do is make me sleep, so... I'm not taking any more. I feel like I'm going crazy. Chaz took her arm and led her to an empty rocking chair. She looked up at him and smiled. And he backed away and sat back on the swing. How are you feeling? Fine. Lucky. Lucky, Tyson laughed. Explain that one. She shrugged. Well, I'm alive. I'm surrounded by people that I love and care for, and those people are taking such good care of me. I feel lucky. That's a terrific positive attitude, Charles said. Chaz smiled at Lisa, pride in his eyes. Yet he knew he had no right to feel that way. She wasn't his and may never be. Are Megan and Shirley still coming over, Lisa asked. Yes, in a few hours. You girls sure are getting pally, Joe said. Yes, we are, aren't we? Isn't it wonderful? It is, Joe said softly. Lisa, Tyson butted in, if you don't mind and if you feel up to it, I'd like to ask you a few questions. No, I don't mind. We can go somewhere private if you'd like. That's okay, she said, looking around. I consider everyone here family. He nodded. Chaz told me that you had a fiancé and that the two of you broke it off under less than congenial conditions. Lisa paled, suddenly wishing she'd taken him up on the privacy bid. She hadn't thought he would question her about her former life. She looked over at Chaz, who appeared apologetic, and she sighed. Less than congenial would be an understatement. He was the one who came here to collect the car from you, correct? Yes. Chaz said he hit you pretty hard. Yes, she said again, softer. Son of a... Who is this guy, Joe said, coming to his feet. It's okay, she hesitated. It's okay, Dad. The softly spoken words stopped him in his tracks. He looked down at the porch steps, hands on hips, working to get his temper under control. Finally, he looked back up at his daughter. It's not okay, Lisa. It's not okay when a man hits a woman. 
She smiled at him. Well, I bloodied his nose once. Does that make it better? Good girl, Charles said. It'll make it better when I bloody his nose, Joe muttered. Lisa, I'm going to need his name and a description of him and his car. Fine, but it wasn't him. Well, you can't know that for sure. He had motive, and you stated earlier that you didn't get a look at the guy. He wore a mask, right? Well, yes, but I'm sure it wasn't him. This guy was larger, much larger. Glenn is only 5'10 and not very heavy. And when this guy was on top of me, on top of you, Chaz broke in. You didn't say that before. She shrugged. I didn't think about it before. You see, I was fighting him, trying to get away so I could get to my gun. You have a gun? The question was asked by at least three of the people present. If you keep interrupting me, I'll never get the story out. Everyone shut up, Tyson ordered. Now, Lisa, you were fighting him and... And he laid on top of me, I think, to use his body to hold me still so that he could free his hands to do other things, like, you know, pull out his knife and slice me open. She'd started out trying to make a sarcastic remark and was surprised when her voice broke. Okay, hon, take a breath. Would you like something to drink? Tyson asked softly. Maddie jumped up. I'll get you something, dear. Lisa watched her go inside before she turned back. Four men peered at her compassionately. Lisa, Tyson said gently, I know you stated earlier that you weren't raped, and if you were too embarrassed to tell the truth, it's okay. But you need to tell me now. No, no, really, he didn't touch me in that way at all. I admit he scared me, and I thought he was going to rape me, but apparently that wasn't on his mind. Chaz's eyes closed. Thank God for that, Joe muttered. So what happened then? Tyson continued. Well, then he told me to get out of this town, apologize for what he was about to do, and you know the rest. He was like, um, angry. He seemed mad at me, like I'd done something personal to him. Which brings us back to your ex-fiance. It wasn't him. Well, nevertheless, I want his information. He stood and retrieved a small pad and pen from his car. Lisa wrote the information down, and Maddie came back out with a plate of cookies and some tea for Lisa. I want to know about the gun, Charles said, a twinkle in his eye. Lisa grinned at him. It's nothing special. A Derringer, D-38 double action. I've only pulled it once before, and that was to order Glenn out of my home. Why did you order him out of your home, Tyson asked. We lived together in a penthouse apartment in Los Angeles. I caught him. She stopped to choose her words carefully. No one needed to know the dirty details. He was having an affair and I caught him. I ordered him out and he wasn't inclined to leave on his own. So I motivated him. You're a feisty little thing, ain't you? Charles said, grinning. I suppose I am, she said, grinning right back at him. Charles nodded at Chaz. I like this girl just fine. Chaz looked down. How could he tell his father that he liked her too? Liked her just fine, but he was too broken a man to do anything about it. The only thing he'd done was hurt her. He'd almost convinced her that all he'd wanted to do was win her, but she'd seen right through him. And he looked up to find Lisa's eyes on him. I really could use some exercise, Chaz. Would you like to go for a walk? He cleared his throat and scrambled to his feet. I, uh... Sure. Charlie watched his eldest son as he escorted Lisa down the porch steps. He's interested, huh? Joe asked once the kids had moved out of sight. He is. I'm hoping she's just what he needs to get past everything. He eyed Joe. You got any problems with that? Joe smiled. I couldn't think of a better situation than to have my daughter fall in love with a local boy, get married, and stick around to give me grandchildren. And I couldn't think of a better man than your son. He looked over at Tyson, other than your other son. Charlie nodded with a smile. I thought you'd probably see it that way. Tyson shook his head. If only I'd seen her first. New scene. Which way? Lisa asked. Chaz gestured toward the back of the house. You ever been down to the creek? It's real pretty down there. I'm game. She turned to walk, holding her injured arm with her right hand to keep it from jarring too much. They walked in silence down the side yard, past the vegetable garden, toward the terrace flower garden. Lisa smiled at the yellow and gold colored flowers. 
She knew they were marigolds. There were some daisy-looking plants and something purple, Grams had said, were great because they didn't need much water. And on the lower terrace, more in the shade, were a rainbow of colors. Lisa couldn't remember what they were called, something about patience. She only remembered they do well in the shade. Chaz placed a hand on her lower back to help propel her up the hill, but removed it quickly. He hadn't expected the sudden jolt. They headed past the pecan grove and into the woods. Sneaking glances at her as they walked, he tried to assess her health. Her face was definitely pale, and she lost weight, but her eyes were bright. She was as beautiful as ever, even dressed so casually, with her hair braided back and the loose lounge clothing she wore. Lisa looked up at him. All this time, I've spent lying around doing nothing. It's given me plenty of time to think. And? And I was thinking about something you said. What was that? You said you had some things to work out, and you suggested, at least in my mind, that once you took care of those things, then you and me could be a possibility. Sighing, he reached up and rubbed the back of his neck. I don't know what to say, Lisa. She chuckled. You know, Chaz, you making me beg is not good for my self-esteem or what's left of it. Lisa, I'm sorry I hurt you. I didn't mean for things to turn out like they did. Yeah, you, you said that the other day. Funny thing is, I believe you. I don't know why I do, but I do. Look, Chaz, is it some sort of fear of commitment? I know a lot of men have a real problem with that. I wouldn't pressure you. I've just gotten out of a crappy relationship myself, as you well know. We could just take... I'm not afraid of commitment. She looked up at him, the frustration mounting. Okay. She waited to see if he intended to tell her what the problem was, but he continued walking silently, so she forged on. I've gone over everything, every detail in my mind again and again. I mean, like, I met you on a Tuesday afternoon. Not 24 hours later, on Wednesday morning, you kissed me. And then you kissed me again on Friday morning. Remember when I fought with Glenn and you carried me inside? Geez, Lisa, of course I remember. And let me point out that it wasn't just me kissing you. You were feeding, feeling it. You were as much into it as me. Oh, I'm not denying that. And that's not the direction I was headed. Now don't interrupt. She drew a deep breath. So that very Friday, you take me to the social. And afterward, well, you know what happened. I'd known you for three days. Three days. And if we hadn't been interrupted, I'm pretty sure I would have given myself to you, a virtual stranger, that very night in that little Sunday school room, right next to a picture of Jesus surrounded by little children. Chaz swallowed hard, remembering the passion. He started to speak, but she held up her hand. That is so not me, Chaz. I don't go around giving myself to men I've just met. You'll just have to believe me on that. I mean, Glenn always said I was approved. But you, Chaz, you weren't just anyone. It's so cliche, I know, but I felt as if I'd known you a long time. No one has ever made me feel the way you do. I've never had such an instant attraction to anyone. So I knew, even though I'd only known you a short time, that you were special. Huh. Guess you were wrong there. She stopped in the middle of the forest and swung around, fire in her eyes. I'll let you know when it's your turn to speak. He bit his lip to keep from smiling. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah, so I knew you were special. When you asked me to watch the stars with you, I knew what was up. I could have turned you down, but I wanted you to make love to me. I wanted you, and even though we didn't quite get to the making love part, it was wonderful, and you were wonderful. Now, don't you think after all we gave to each other, after the closeness we shared, that at the very least, I deserve some sort of explanation? I wait, I'm not finished. I've tried to figure it out. I even tried to accept your sloppy attempt at making me hate you. Then when you showed up to take care of me, when this happened, she said, slightly raising her arm, I could see the truth in your eyes. They walked in silence for several moments. Well, what do you have to say? He looked up. I didn't know it was my turn yet. Her eyes narrowed. He laughed. Sorry. Lisa, yes, I think you deserve an explanation. I, he stopped to draw a deep breath. 
that night in your truck, you're right. It was wonderful. You were wonderful. All the way until the very end when he stopped. There was no way he could tell her what he'd seen. He shook his head. Look, Lisa, it had nothing to do with you. I have a problem. I thought I had it licked. They came upon a large rock and Lisa sat down to rest. She looked up at him, her expression soft and compelling. What happened at the end there, Chaz? She sat silently, giving him the time he needed to express himself. He was grateful for her kindness, for her willingness to understand, and for just a moment he thought he could speak the words. I was with you, and then, and then I wasn't. He looked at her, her face turned up to him, listening to him with eager anticipation. He closed his eyes against the moisture that gathered, and he couldn't talk about this. Lisa watched his face, trying to read what he was trying to say, and then it hit her. He served time in Iraq. This must have something to do with that, with the war. Chaz, she said gently, if this has something to do with the war, you know, like post-traumatic stress disorder, it can be worked through. His eyes shuddered. Lisa, I really can't talk about this now. Please understand. She nodded and sighed. Okay. They sat in silence for several minutes, and when she felt rested, she asked, so... How much farther is the creek? He stood and pointed this way. She gazed at her surroundings as they walked. I've just realized that we've been walking through the woods and I'm not even afraid. He cocked a brow. Are you usually afraid of the woods? I've never actually been in the woods. From the outside, they seem really scary. She looked around, but it's, it's actually quite lovely, isn't it? Peaceful, quiet. I like it here. He smiled at her and pointed ahead. And there is your creek. They emerged onto a rocky bank covered with leaves and sticks from all the surrounding trees. The water wasn't a bubbling mountain spring like she'd imagined, but a smooth flowing stream about 20 feet across. The trees from the forest loomed overhead, blocking out most of the direct sunlight, making the air cool and serene. Oh, it really is nice here, she said, sitting down to remove her sandals. In only a few seconds, she was standing in the water. Chaz watched her, and he did, and as he did, he realized that the strong pull had not dissipated, not even a little. He still wanted her, desperately. Yet there was no way he could chance it. Somehow he had to keep his distance until he had control of his faculties. Would he lose her? He couldn't blame her if she moved on, and then he remembered Marcus. Lisa? She looked up, smiling. I hear you're going out with Marcus next Saturday. She shrugged. Yeah, a ballet at the Fox Theater. I hear the Fox is really something. Who told you? He did. When? He came by the night you were hurt. He said he wanted to see what all the excitement was about. Oh, that was nice of him. He frowned. There isn't a nice bone in his body. She looked up in surprise and climbed onto the bank. Why do you say that? Just take my word for it. Well, no offense, sweetheart, but at this moment, your work with me isn't very reputable. He nodded. I get that, but really, Lisa, I'm serious. What if I asked you to not go out with him? Have you got a better offer? She asked, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. He looked down. Will you give that a rest? I guess that's a no. So the answer to your question is, I'd tell you to go. She stopped herself. I tell you to mind your own business. He took her by the shoulders and she gasped in pain and letting go immediately. He stepped back. Oh, Lisa, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm okay. Really? He shook his head and turned away. I can't seem to do anything right. Reaching out, she touched his shoulder. That's not true. You do almost everything right. She smiled back at him. Look, if you don't want me to go out with Marcus and you say the reason is a good one, I'll trust you. And I won't go out with him again. But I've already told him I would go this time. And he already has tickets. And so I will be going to the Fox. He shook his head, sighed heavily. Just be careful. I'm always careful, she said with a mischievous smile. Except where you're concerned. And that is the end of Chapter 10.